so the knee was pretty much is uh, a lot of scour issues around drains, well, uh, bridges, that's what we run into very often. Uh, the only method we had before that was to shovel by hand. There was no other tool or attachment that could do what the guardrail blade could do. I mean, you go to a longer structure, guardrail extending out, I mean, it takes a crew, say five people, it takes them half a day to clean out from around the guardrail to keep the water from scouring out of the abutment, which is a very common problem, uh, a lot more common than, you know, we think of. So my boss came to me with a dozer blade pitcher and pretty much said, can we build anything like this? And I asked him what it was for, and he said to clean under guardrail. So well, I don't think that's going to work, but we can come up with something else. So that's when I went out and I figured out the distance we needed, the width we needed, and on the front of the guardrail blade is actually a motor grader blade. So we knew that when you cut anything down, you're going to need to replace a blade over time. So all that came into effect, and uh, we did have to make some adjustments over time. It wasn't always perfect, you know, the first run, then you're going to find, you know, your weakest link, fix it, fix it. So and the second run is the one that everybody sees now. That's our new and improved guardrail blade is what I call it. But, I mean, it was all just pretty much scrap metal pieces. Um, we actually didn't have to order special material for this. It was all handmade. It took me about two and a half days to fabricate it. Uh, because it is completely, you know, like self-contained. I didn't have to cut another attachment to make this attachment. It actually is its complete own attachment. Well, I spoke to other districts at the Innovation Showcase, uh, but a lot of the other surrounding parishes around us, uh, Ascension has gotten with us and they want to use it on some of their structures, East and West Feliciana, which is where a lot of the scour issues occur uh, because the elevation, right. you know, water runs off so fast oh, yeah. up there. But some of the other parishes have reached out and asked us, and they actually do want to make an attachment to keep in their arsenal so they can use it to clean out underneath their bridges too. If you, if you have a good idea that could save time, manpower, and help anybody out, I mean, that's through the district. That's what we want to do is work together, you know, try to find better ideals, better solutions to make everything more efficient. We were kind of hesitant to, to get into it because we knew it was a lot of work and stuff like that, but it definitely paid off. Uh, for sure. I mean, even if we wouldn't have won, we met a lot of good people. We actually saw a lot of great things that we could carry over into our district as well, too. Uh, the guardrail extractor and some things like that. It's actually, we use it now. So, uh, awesome. yeah, so we got to carry over some innovations to help us out to make us more efficient, too.
And so, yeah, we went in the first year, and I know they were trying to, you know, work out some glitches. So we had some outdoor stuff as well as the technical stuff. So ours kind of came in, you know, behind everyone else. But um, the next year rolled around, and they said, hey, you know, you're welcome to put it in again. We've got, you know, we're going to split it up this time. We're going to, you know, change up some things. And, yeah, we won $2,500 last year. We were third place. We purchased some little things, like a couple tape measures, um, a couple clipboards that have a little storage behind it, some little things like that. Um, but then we also purchased some bigger items like a handheld Garmin for the truck. We had a GPS previously. We bought a brand new one. It was more updated. We can keep it updated. You know, it had more gadgets on it. We also got a smart level that's helping us pick up more information rather than what we already had on the form. Um, we're being able to you know, really get those um, slopes that are out there in the case of when I'm looking for clear zone and back slope, four slope type things for safety and treatments. Uh, we were able to get a laser level, laser construction level, which is this large thing you see behind me. Um, that was our most expensive product, which really gave us the benefit of being able to shoot some ditch grade and really um, fine tune our information that we were picking up. So now we know for sure a direction of water flow and we're kind of seeing what's going on out in the field. We also got a couple digital wheels, which helps us be able to measure. We, we measure between pipes, we measure driveways, we measure lots of things when we're out in the field. Um, so this just made it 10 times easier for us. Currently it's in PDF format um, and I scan the whole package uh, with their initial permit application and the page itself with all the information. So it's it's stored in the permits office, it's stored in my computer, and we have a hard copy as well. At the Innovations on the Lawn, I actually was able to talk to someone in Baton Rouge. So my, my hope for this is that it won't stay necessarily in paper form. I hope to maybe get it electronically, whether that be on you know, some type of tablet or you know, even if we just come in and we do it electronically um, on the computer. But I really would like to link it to our GIS systems, be able to you know, already have it in the systems. That way we have a permit come in. I can pull up another one that I've already done right up the road, already see previous, and I can do that now now because I have it scanned in and I do you know keep track of that information but I really would like to get it digitally and, and like that innovation showcase on the lawn was able to get me in contact with people who can help me further that. We call it bridge data mobility was the title of the innovation and essentially what that was was a function or a, a, a system by which we take information, bridge, generally bridge information from our InspectTech system which is our new uh, system that we use for all of our bridge inspections and cycles and that kind of stuff and essentially use that data to query it out and put it into Google Maps which we can then share with uh, I share it with my bridge foremen, with area engineers, with my inspection teams on getting information that normally, you know, we would have to come back into the office, sit down, look up specific information on a bridge. Now I can push all this stuff out into, into the field to these guys on their mobile devices or on our iPads that we use for inspection in real time. We use it for really all sorts of functions from just finding a bridge to being able to pull up at a bridge and, and pull in um, all the geometric information, how many bents are on the bridge, what's the bridge type, um, anything of that sort. And really the, we can kind of customize all this information that we're pulling in, send different types of maps out. What we do now with our school board maps that we have to send out every, every year for the school boards on load posted bridges, I now send a link through Google Maps. They can click on the link uh, they can share the link, email it around to, to their school bus drivers or superintendents, whoever it may be, and they can click on see where all their load posted bridges are, what they're posted. If I go in, say in a couple months, and we change some load postings around, I can go change the map, and it's real time. The next time they click on it, it's updated. So it's been a very good innovation for us as far as being able to get get our bridge data mobile out into the field where we can actually use it in the field this winter cycle, um, which we really only had one somewhat minor storm, we didn't have anything major, but uh, I do have now went in before the storm events. I sat down with our area engineers and we come up with and our administration and basically what we done was we come up with what we considered primary routes and secondary routes. Um, our primary routes being, you know, the things that we absolutely are 
going to make 100% effort to keep open, and then the rest of the bridge is being second, you know, on secondary routes. So what I've essentially done, I, I made a map with each different area, primary, secondary routes. They're coded by assignment groups. So the area engineers can go in there and they can assign a certain number of bridges or certain number of routes to whatever team it may be. If I can send it on an email link, those guys can pull it up on their phone or at their office, whatever, and they can see, they get a real-time map. All right, this is my bridges, this is what we're covering this storm. You know, look, I would really encourage anybody, you know, that can to really get into the innovations. Uh, it's very good for DOTD as a whole. Uh, I've seen, you know, in the two years I've been down there during the innovations things, I mean, there's, it's really amazing the, the amount of innovation, innovative stuff. You take some of the stuff that, that's won previously, I know like OH Rut Buster, um, you know, now I know just about every district's trying to get one of those things made. I mean, it was, you know, could have been just, they could have kept that to themselves and not thought anything about it. And by doing this innovation challenge now, you know, it's a benefit to all, I mean, basically to all of DOTD now.